In this video we're going to see what are program control operations. We have various program control operations like Jump and label Jump list Switch, and return Finally we'll improve the project, which have been done at previous video. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's see what are program control operations. The first is jump and label. We can use the jump instruction to interrupt the linear execution of the program and resume it in another network. Let's see what does this instruction in this program. Here, we have three networks. In the first network, a jump instruction is used, which refers to network 3. Now, this instruction is not activated. So, CPU runs all networks from the first ones to last. When the jump instruction is activated, which refers to network 3, the program execution jumps to network 3, and the second networks won't run. Let's write a simple program, to see how we can use these instructions. Here are program control operations. The jump instruction has been told. Next instruction is jump negative. That's like simple jump, but it works when the RLO is zero. Let me use that. Here, the destination network must be identified by a label. We can use label instruction to identify a destination network, in which the program execution should resume, when a jump is executed. Now I can refer to label 1, which is placed in the third network. Now let me insert some simple contacts and coils. Pay attention, we can just use one jump instruction in each network. Also only one label can be used for each network. Also all labels name must be different. Now, let's test this program.
the jump negative instruction do its jump, if the RLO be zero. But now, all networks are executing. As you see, we can change state of a contact, with control plus F2, and control plus F3. Now, let me change state of this contact, it makes the RLO be zero, behind the jump negative instruction. At this time, program jumps to label 1, which is placed in the third network. So the second network won't be executed. Pay attention, jump and label instructions must be in the same block, and it doesn't matter where the label is used. The jump direction can be towards higher or lower network numbers. Let's see next instruction, jump list. This instruction defines several conditional jumps, and continue the program execution in a specific network, depending on the value of the K parameter. The destination network must be identified by a label. At this program, first, we need to activate start contact. Now, the K parameter value is 0. So the program jumps to destination network with label 0. If the K parameter value was 1 or 2, the program jumps to network with label 1 or label 2. We can increase network destination up to 32. Pay attention, if the K parameter is greater than 31, for example 40, program don't jump, and CPU execute the program from next network. Let's see next instruction, switch, or jump distributor. This instruction, define multiple program jumps to be executed, depending on the result of one or more comparison instructions. We can select the data type of the instruction from here. Actually, this instruction is like jump list. First we need activate it. Then, the destination network, will be determined based on some comparison. Here, we can select comparators. For each condition, we must determine a label at the output part. If none of conditions don't be true, the program will jump to last destination. For example, here, the K parameter value is 0, which is less than 5. It satisfy the first condition, so, the program will jump to first destination, with label 0. For this instruction, we can increase outputs up to 32, when we use S7-1200 CPUs. Next instruction is return. This instruction can stop the execution of a program block. As you know, when a CPU is in running mode, it reads and stores state of all inputs, then executes its program from first network to last, in the main block, OB1. Then updates state of all outputs. CPU repeats the cycle, which we call that scan cycle. If a return instruction use in the main block, CPU won't execute remainder networks, exit from the main block, and repeat its scan cycle. If we use the return instruction in a function block or function, CPU will return to its previous block. Alright. We had done a project with this tank which has been improved in the previous video. At this project, we're going to improve that again. I want, if the liquid level less than 10%, the fill light start to blink, and if the liquid level greater than 90%, the discharge light start to blink.
All right, this is the previous project program. As you see, we had to find two push button lights, which were not used at previous videos. Also these tags were defined for the lights, in TIA software. Here we have the liquid level, base on percent, at the output of displayer function, with QD18 address. At this network, I'm going to insert conditions. So let me insert a switch instruction. Alright. When the QD18 address, in other word, liquid level, is less than 10%, the program will jump to a specified network. I use, blinker fill light label, for that. Also if the liquid level is greater than 90, this program will jump to another network, with blinker discharge light label. Alright. At this network, with blinker fill light label, we want to blink the fill light, but how? Maybe you have written a program with timers, to blink this output. But here is a simple solution. Let me open device configuration. Select PLC, then, at the bottom, select system and clock memory. Click here, to define a memory address as clock memory byte. For this PLC, we can select a byte number from 0 to 4095. Let me choose the last byte. So, every bit of, M4095 address, will blink with a specified frequency. For example, the last bit, M4095.7, will be on off with frequency 0.5 Hz. Now, let me use this bit, to turn on off the fill light. Alright, after this line, I don't want the next condition will be run. So I use return instruction, to restart this program from the first network. Here I need to define a bit memory. As you see, I have not used the M1.0 address. So I write it here. With the same way, I insert suitable program for discharge light, but with another frequency. Now, what about if two conditions are not true? For this state, 
here, I can refer to the first network. Now let test this program. As you see, when the liquid level is less than 10%, the fill lights start blinking. Let me press the fill light push button to start filling. When the liquid level is greater than 10, this light will be off. As you see, when the liquid level reach to 90%, the discharge lights start blinking. Alright, I have improved this program in 3 lessons. Now, I transfer that to my PLC, and test it again. When I press this push button, my PLC starts tank filling. When the water level rises above 10%, an error occurs in my PLC operation, which have not seen in the previous test, with TIA simulator. Let me show you, what is this error. In my program, here, when the water level reaches to 10%, CPU jumps to the first network, Then the program will be executed. Again at this network, CPU jumps to the first network. So, this cycle will be repeated, and CPU won't exit from its program, to update PLC outputs inputs. In another word, the amount of time, it takes for the PLC to make one program executing, or scan cycle, will be more than its usual value, which is about 5 milliseconds. To solve this error, I use this label at the end of my program. Also, this network should not be empty, so, I write a simple program here like this. Now, if I transfer this program to my PLC, we'll see, the PLC will work without any error. Pay attention, if you want to be a PLC programmer, you need to write your programs, test them, and try to find and solve its problems. Then transfer your programs to your PLC and test it again. In the next videos we'll complete basic instructions. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.